Actually, real quick, by the way, if anyone wants to call in and join this conversation with Chris, that's me, and Danny, and Mac, by the way, who has joined us on the other microphone, and Dan Dix of Press for Truth, feel free to call in at 512-646-1984. That's 512-646-1984. Join the conversation here. Dan, like, tell us, I mean, there, there's just so many things, like you said, proof of the benefits of, of marijuana. There's some indication it may uh, help treat cancer or even prevent cancer. Uh, it's been proven definitively to help people with seizures, as you mentioned. Uh, it helps people with anxiety. Uh, it helps cancer patients going through chemotherapy with uh, nausea and lack of appetite. Um, you know, it just has all of these benefits. And of course, you know, it can be used as a cloth, as a rope, as uh, it's a very complete food. Uh, it's, you know, it can it's practically like the opposite of government. <laughs> you can <laughs> use it for anything. It's It helps you with uh, creative energies. It heals you. Yeah. Doc- and- <laughs> doctors, have recommend- doctors have recommended it as medicine for literally millennia. Exactly. And as of like 100 years ago, it suddenly gets stomped on by who again? By, uh, well, I, I, you know, we had Barry Cooper on discussing some of the origins of the war on drugs, and I forget who he mentioned, but some of the senators who were uh, propagandizing against weed, and in fact, some of the propaganda was basically racist, saying, well, if white women smoke weed, they're going to have, uh, you know, Ill, you know, wrong relations with people of other races, yeah, I, which is I, just ridiculous. I, I don't think it matters exactly what it is they say. I, I feel like it's... A, uh, a manifestation of the psychology of fascism, just applying itself to uh, the first thing that it can. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think they've, you know, they knew long ago that it was, you know, could help people with uh, various things. And and so, Dan, you know, you were also talking about how it should be a truly free market. And of course, mm-hmm. I agree with you ideologically and and that i mean and, and not even just ideologically logically i mean it's not about are are you a free marketer versus not it's that logic shows that a free market is what benefits everybody but you know that's another another point is that with all these licensings and regulations and uh restrictions even when it is legalized that still helps big pharma because they're the one with the deep pockets who can get in there and take over the market it's not just big pharma; it's the big court system that is For cleaning sure. up on legal fees and uh, asset forfeitures and all kinds of stuff like that. Absolutely, and is that your concern too? That even if it does get legalized, that it's still just going to be kind of taken over by uh, these big corporations? Yeah, yeah, precisely. <clears throat> that if, if it does become legalized, that um, you won't be able to grow it yourself, and that you will only have to be able to get it from these government-issued licensed LPs, basically. And these are people who don't know squat about growing. Um, They are overriding this industry that has been built over the decades and decades here in British Columbia where they've figured it out to a science what is really, really good for the beneficial for the actual patients. Um, The LPs who are getting these licenses, they don't know anything about that. Um, So that's what it really comes down to. That's why I think the fundamental fight is all about the right to grow your own. Um, I want to direct people to where they can go to get involved in this. I mean, I have friends here in BC. Um, they're running uh, cannabisincanada.ca. You got to check that out. And we got another group of guys who are putting together a coalition of growers here. And we're not talking about, you know, these aren't these aren't gangster. Th- these aren't your hell's angels and, and gangsters. These are family men. These are. Uh, gr- Honest, true people who have been building the BC Bud name over decades, and you can check them out at cannagrowers.ca. This is a coalition of growers who is coming together to fight the government, you know, to take on this, this, you know, they're building a coalition to take on the government's fight to take away the right to grow. You know, like you said, it's sort of almost like the... Hayekian knowledge problem that these local growers have for decades developed the skills and knowledge to be able to uh, very scientifically and precisely produce uh, weed tailored to the different needs of medical patients. And so these companies come in, they don't know what they're doing, and they'll reduce quality. But more than that, you know, if they want to compete, let them compete freely. If they end up doing it better, 
great, but if they're just given a, a privilege legally to come in, uh, it's just going to bring down the, the quality of the whole market and run out these legitimate businesses that, in a true free market, probably would have continued to exist and prosper. And uh, we have Dan Dix of Press for Truth on the crypto show. We're coming to break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, guys. Real quick, Dan, how did you get involved in focusing on this issue? I mean, was it just kind of another libertarian issue for you or what's your own personal experience with it? Um, marijuana is the gateway to liberty. Um, it was a no brainer like for me because I, you know, have been doing this for quite some time and I can see the direction that this is going. We see where it's gone in America. I mean, with Colorado and Washington and it's it clearly there's something happening in the movement. So we know that this is going to be a key issue in Canada and we're at the ground floor of this happening right now. So, you know, we wanted to get involved in this and expose this issue and show people that this is absolutely key. This could be the, this could be the trigger issue that wakes up all of Canadians to realizing that they're being, you know, controlled by a tyrannical government. I mean, that's why we, we, we get behind this idea that marijuana is not the gateway drug to, to, to bigger, badder drugs. It's the gateway to liberty. And that's why we decided to get behind this movement right now, because it's at, it's at its infancy. This is where it's going in a few years from now. Everyone's going to be talking about the legalization of marijuana in Canada so we wanted to get in on uh, on the ground floor and make sure that we uh, counter the propaganda that yeah, the, right. the government and the mainstream media is putting out right now at the ground floor and make sure people understand what kind of legalization they're going to actually want, you know, as opposed to what these crony capitalists want. You know, Dan, I really like what you just said about marijuana uh, is the gateway to liberty. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's a wonderful phrase. Uh, I'm going to start using that, actually. And it's really true uh, in many respects because, well, for instance, in the United States, and I'm not quite sure how it compares to Canada. It's probably similar. In the United States, a huge, something like half of the people in jail are there for marijuana-related, quote-unquote, crimes. Oh, yeah. And so marijuana laws are directly impacting millions and millions of people over generations negatively financially uh their family their freedom and there's no, there's literally no justification for it at least when the government comes in and prohibits or restricts other things it, it has an excuse now i'm not i usually the, almost i say usually really all the time the excuse is bs but in this case marijuana you know it doesn't hurt anybody and it has all these benefits so ultimately the justification for its prohibition is arbitrary because the government can't say well it's hurting you uh, and that's why we're making it illegal cuz it doesn't hurt anybody it's and very profitable look how many private prisons it's built <laughs> that's <laughs> true and uh, like other drugs it's been very profitable for the government which which runs the drugs as well as uh, prohibiting it on the other end and so what what do you think then you know, we kind of uh, mentioned this earlier. W what do you think then when people like Ted Turner or George Soros are behind legalization? That that makes me, that unsettles me. And I'm not sure what to think of that. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that, that unsettles me as well. Um, you know, because they, these guys are people who think two steps ahead of the game. They're always looking ahead and they, they can foresee things as well. And they're trying to, you know, um, get get ahead of the game. And when, when guys like that are trying to get in on it, I, I start to think, man, oh, man, what do they have in store? What What is their idea of legalization? And it really, what is it going to be? It's going to be uh, purely just completely government-controlled, regulated, only the – um, you know, the, the insiders who, who get the right to, to grow probably radiated GMO, probably Monsanto issued seed, which is going to eventually be coming from these government issued licenses. I mean, that's what it's coming down to. That, that's what we have to understand. Like, I don't know, this legalization thing. About, yeah, the legalization yes. sounds like it's kind of a be careful what you wish for thing. <laughs> <laughs> with no, no. all these regulations, that, that, yeah. it, it, you're going to fight to get it legal, and then it's it's going to turn into it's it's not you know something bad. It's not about, and it never has been about if it's legal or not. It's about some people wanting to remove the ability to create culture, 
to produce for the individual self, to have that ability available. Like we talk about Ted Turner and George Soros. Look at what happened to TV and radio. Uh, technology was created that allowed people to broadcast themselves, to create works of art, to share and communicate the human spirit. And uh, it ends up being controlled by an increasingly small amount of people. If people give up that right to create and to produce the world around them. This is the fight that we're fighting. This is what marijuana is about in so many ways. This country, the United States, ha I think that it has more prisoners in, it, in the U.S. prisons than the Soviet Union ever put into their own gulags. Yeah, the U.S., I mean, it's, it's a well-known statistic. That the U.S. has the largest prison population in the world. Yeah, but, we're the land of the free. I you mean, know, don't worry, guys. Even, even more than the quote-unquote Soviet Union from, from times ago. Which, which right. Our, our, our alleged enemy, uh, the Soviet Union, was in a sense freer than the United States. And, uh, I mean, that's a whole other can of worms about how the United States actually financially supported uh, the Soviet Union from the beginning. And uh, we carry books about that by Professor Anthony Sutton huh. here at Brave New Books, 1904 Guadalupe Street, uh, Wall Street in the Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, so come down to the bookstore and check that out sometime, guys. But the point is we can't, we can't lose the fight again even after we legalize it. We can't decide, okay, we're throwing our hands up, everything's over, we got it legalized. It's not like that. That's not even what it's about. Right. It doesn't end there for sure. I agree. Well, and so, uh, Dan, I mean, I, I'm really glad that you responded the way you did because I think a lot of people who uh, otherwise have the right idea in mind when pushing for marijuana legalization don't appreciate the potential dangers involved in that because it is a double-edged sword. Like Denny said, watch what you wish for uh, because that, that gives the government a lot of control in a way with taxing and regulating it and licensing it that it didn't otherwise have. And so it's almost like... To quote the Matrix, it's another level of control, and uh, you know it's a scary thought. And so we do need to keep pressing for uh, you know individual liberty and stuff with that.